Well, good morning. It's really lovely to be with you. And for those of you who haven't met me before, as Imogen says, I'm Debbie uh, and I'm a curate up at St. Stephen's Lansdowne. That's, that's the church as you go up towards the race course that's lit up with those uh, um, different colours all, all year round that you can see from almost everywhere this side of Bath. Um, I've been here for six weeks or so on placement and it has been really wonderful to be with you and a, a real thank you to all of you who've, who've um, shown me bits that you do and who've welcomed me and, and shown me along the way. I've absolutely loved being here with you and today is my last day and I'm sad. I shall be going back to St Stephen's tomorrow ready for all the Christmas services that we have planned up there. They haven't started their Christmas services yet. They're waiting. Um, December, Advent. It's just flying by, isn't it? Look, the second candle. Where, it doesn't seem two minutes ago that the 1st of December, we're the 10th today. It's not very long, is it, till, till the 25th? I just wonder, how, how is Advent for you? Busy, busy, yeah, kids love it, don't they? But as grown-ups, it tends to be a really busy time. That's true for me, I've got three pretty well grown-up girls and um, all the cooking, the present buying, everything. There's Muggins here, who, who, ta- who sort of carries that. But I've been in the church, as, we alluded, as Imogen alluded to, as a, a time of reflection. Time uh, when we think about what it's like to, you know, walk with God. What it's, what's, it, what's it mean for God to be with us? We think, we, so, you know, it's the run-up to Christmas, to, to Jesus coming as a baby, but it, it's also a time when we reflect on um, Christ's second coming, which he's promised. And I wonder, how, were there many of you here last week, here in the morning, here, and you heard Richard's talk? Yeah, Richard. <laughs> Some of you. So a little recap, because Richard invited us on a journey to consider um, Christ's second coming. Um, Matthew particularly talks about it, but, but Luke and John both it's important news. You know, it's, it's in their Gospels. Jesus says he'll come again. But he hasn't come yet. It's, it's a day we're thinking about um, when there's a new creation, as we talked last week. A new creation comes down. From, uh, God comes down from heaven and there's new creation on earth. It's a time, one of the phrases that stood out last week was a time when God praises us for the good things that we've done. It's also a time often known as the day of judgment. And that has less comfortable connotations, doesn't it? So we hold those tensions of what's going to happen. Both of them are talked about in scripture. But it's the ultimate destiny. It's where, it's where we are all headed Rich last week did a bit of a, a poll about how much we think about Christ coming again. I don't know how much you think about it. As a, as a consensus last week, uh, and myself included, we don't think about it very much. You know, on a scale of about naught to ten, uh, well, I don't think I'm at naught, possibly not at one, but I, I may not be an awful lot higher. And yet, that is where we're heading. So why don't we think about it? Jesus said, Matthew 24 talks quite clearly about him coming again. He tells parables about his coming again. He tells parables about the the, uh, ten bridesmaids, the the five who are wise and prepare, and the five that are foolish and don't. Uh, He tells the parable of the loaned money. What do we do with what we've been given? And he also talks about that judgment. Why don't we think about that time when 
it's so clear that that is what the, the ultimate plan is. And it's not a new problem. Um, Peter, living just, uh, well, he, writing just about 30 years or so after Christ's death, uh, was writing to, uh, to believers everywhere. And he noticed even then, you know, 35 years after Jesus' death, that people were, were thinking and behaving in a way that they didn't believe uh, that Jesus was going to come again. Um, and he writes, um, this is the beginning of uh, the third chapter of his second letter. First, I want to remind you that, that in the last days there will be scoffers who will laugh at the truth and do every evil thing they, thing they desire. This will be their argument. Jesus promised to come back, didn't he? Where is he? Why, as far back as anyone can remember, everything has remained exactly the same since the world was first created. That could be written today, couldn't it? We, we think everything's been the same, um, that nothing's going to change. Jesus hasn't come yet. So let's carry on reading, because he's got a few ideas that might help us just to, it's helped me as I've, I've explored this and studied this this, this week, to, to really come to a, a bit of a better understanding of why I don't think about it. And he writes, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord, a day is, is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of of God and and speed up its coming. The day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will be melt in the heat But in keeping with his promise, we're looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you're looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you, and the wisdom that God gave him. Paul begins by reminding us about our perception of time. And the way that God views time and how that's different to ours he starts by saying a thousand days, a thousand years is like a day to the Lord. If that's the case, we're only two days away from the birth of Christ in God's uh, economy. Time's a concept we think we get, don't we? We talk about it, we use time every day. What's time? God, time's dragging on. God, hasn't, time, hasn't that time passed flat quickly? We talk about it every day, don't we? And yet, when we actually think about it, what is time? Philosophers and, uh, have found it quite a difficult concept to actually come up with a really clear definition of. You know, scientists have their definitions, and, and Einstein famously uh, talked about uh, rel- the relativity of time. Uh, he linked time and space and matter, which physicists all, all now agree. Um, it, it is that time is, can, can't exist outside of that space and matter. But God 
has always existed. We're told he set creation, you know, he created the heavens and the earth. So is God outside of time? There are lots of of, of, uh, different ideas and ways of approaching this. And it's sort of a difficult concept, isn't it, when you think about time? I know people have gone mad when they thought about eternity, you know, the beginning of time and the end of time. Because everything we know is finite. It has a, a beginning and it has an end. I came across a, a diagram that I thought was quite helpful. And yes, it's snowing outside. <laughs> yeah, I found this, this diagram quite helpful. It, it sort of mirrors uh, one Rich used last week. We look at creation, we look at the life of Christ, we look at where we are uh, uh, in the middle. And Christ's return, we don't know how long that uh, last little bit is. But somehow, God is present to all of those. God talks of himself. His name is, when he talks to himself, is to Moses. He says, my name is I am. I am who I am. It's in the present tense. Jesus talked about um, being before uh, Abraham was. Before Abraham was, I am. Somehow, God is outside of time, and yet he's also with us and inside of time. We also have different perceptions of time. You know, that's, that's thinking about God and how his time and... Let's wait until How, yeah, how his time um, is different to ours, his perception of time, because he's always present in every moment. But we have different perceptions of time ourselves, don't we? Um, as I mentioned earlier, oh, that time that really dragged, that was so boring, it really dragged. And times when we're really busy and time has flown. Um, and if you go somewhere new, drive somewhere new, if we travel somewhere new, Time can seem, you know, it can take, seems to take an awfully long time. I remember the first time I drove uh, one of the lanes, um, not dissimilar to near us. I drove the first time I drove from the bottom of Rush Hill to uh, Priston, near where I live now, uh, and I remember that journey seemed like it went on forever and ever and ever and ever going down these narrow lanes just like that just closed single track lanes it's only three miles from the bottom of Rush Hill to Priston and yet it seemed to go on forever think back to your childhood Uh, I don't know if Christmas was something that you looked forward to for most children it is it seemed an awfully long time, didn't it, between one Christmas and another? I suppose if you're five or four, you know, one whole year is quite a large proportion of your life. As you get bigger and older and you get busier, years seem to go by ever faster. And yet a year is still the same length of time. Our perception changes. There's a whole science about the psychology of, of time perception, apparently, which I didn't realise. Peter says, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. There's purpose in God's waiting. You know, as we wait for Christmas... I'm reminded of the Israelites being in that similar position. There was, you know, David alluded to another king coming. God spoke to David, you, there'll be another king in your line who's, who will live on forever. Uh, we have Isaiah, sort of 700 years before Christ's birth, prophesying the Messiah. We've got a few more prophets. And then we've got 400 years before God's, uh, Jesus' birth, Silence, absolute silence from God. Is God coming? You 
many missed Christ's birth because he didn't come quite as they expected. I often wonder about Mary, how she viewed being told that she was going to carry this child. Uh, we think about it quite often about, from the point of view as, of it being a, a disgrace for an unmarried mother, especially in her culture. But um, what was her expectation of God's coming, of the Messiah coming? And I often wonder about uh, her pregnancy. The angel Gabriel, we, we're told about the angel Gabriel coming and telling her that she's going to become pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And then silence until the birth. Often it seems, seems like that in films and, and in literature, doesn't it? You know, somebody falls pregnant and then they give birth. But actually nine months is quite a long time when you're waiting. I, I'm going to carry on with this um, picture of birth and, and pregnancy. But I'm just aware before I carry on that, that that can be quite a difficult subject for some people, uh, especially for women. Uh, if you've not been able to have children and you've wanted to, uh, if you've lost children, uh, if children have left home, all sorts of, of different scenarios. Um, and, and I, and I apologise in a way for carrying on with this in, in what can be painful. Um, we will, there will be time afterwards for prayer ministry if that's something that you find difficult with because that affects the enjoyment of Christmas and all sorts of things. So if, that's, if that is you, then we would like to pray with you afterwards. But I think there's so much richness in, that, in an image of, um, of pregnancy that helps us to understand uh, this time that we're in waiting for Christ's second coming. Because there's loads of parallels, isn't there? Um, there's that waiting. You said nine months is a long time. Now you're, you're told you're pregnant, or you find out you're pregnant. And then life just carries on as normal, and it's as if nothing's happening. And yet you know that in nine months or so's time, everything's going to change. Then there's a, and a new life. And you know, uh, uh, you know, from a woman's perspective, it's exciting, but there's also uh, a lot of fear Day, uh, um, childbirth is a dangerous time. Thankfully, not too many uh, with modern medicine, but still, it's something like uh, eight pregnant, eight, eight women out of a hundred thousand still die in childbirth in this country. If you go to other countries, uh, that's an awful lot higher. It's something like um, Three hundred, one in one in three hundred will die in childbirth. That's that's a really, really high statistic, isn't it? That would have been more like Mary's time. No, it was a dangerous time for her, dangerous time. But you know, there's that there's that image of new life coming, and we talk about the new creation as the heavens, uh, as God recreates uh, the the earth. So there's, preg there's a purpose in the waiting. In pregnancy, that life grows inside the mother. And as time does go on, that life begins to make itself felt. Uh, there's the, the first little kicks that, that become stronger. There's sort of glimpses of the life that's going to be. A little bit like when we get glimpses now of what the new creation is going to be like, what it's going to be like when we're with God. You know, when you lose yourself in worship, when prayers answered, when you have those moments of where you just sense God's presence or his love for you or his peace, you know, that peace that passes all understanding. They're moments, they're, they're glimpses of the new life that's that's to come, but it's not come in all its fullness. Peter tells us God's not slow in keeping his promise. That he's being patient with us. 
because he's not wanting anyone to perish. God wants life. God is, God breathes life. He is life. All our life comes from God. It's what God's about. He's being patient because he wants us all to be able to come to know, um, to come to know him and to know that relationship with him. He wants, to, he wants that life in us. So he gives us time and space to grow and develop, just like that child develops inside the mother. That time to turn towards him. That time to learn to love as God loves. To trust in him. Trust in him for our protection. Think of that baby in the womb, surrounded by its mother, for its protection, for its nourishment. How often do we lean on God for our nourishment and our protection and our, our growth? It's a time of growing and a time of maturing. Time waiting for, in pregnancy, for that, that baby to be big enough and strong enough to be able to be born. It's a time in waiting for Christ's second coming in that maturing of believers, of all of us. It's a time for new believers to be born, for new people to be born. So you think about if, if Jesus had come back uh, when Paul was, Peter was writing, sort of 36 years after Christ's uh, death, we wouldn't be here, would we? So it's time for God's fullness uh, in all that he's planning to come to maturity. We know roughly when uh, a baby's going to be born, don't we? Nine months-ish, plus or minus a few weeks. But it comes suddenly. And Peter was talking about the suddenness, too, of Christ's coming. So we, he also talks about a, a response to in this time of waiting. When we are... A, pregnant we can't always do the things that we've been able to do before a little bit when you come to faith God has he has some really good guidance for us he's asking us to live in that way of, uh, of in, learn to live in his way to live in this time of waiting in this time of expectation you know, a mother needs to uh, not only limited in what they can do physically, but you also need to eat well. We can't drink too much, if at all. Smoking's not good, you know, all those things. In this time of waiting, we too need to feed on Christ, on his word. We need to uh, learn to live as he says, live holy and godly lives. I know these are things that we talk about a lot in church, so I'm not going to dwell on them. Uh, he calls us to be spotless. I was thinking about this and about, you know, it's like clean clothes, isn't it? I don't wear white trousers. I live on a farm. I don't really wear white trousers. They get dirty too quickly. You've got to go and wash them all the time. It's a bit like that, isn't it? We do, as, as Imogen was saying, talking about earlier when we, we prayed that prayer of repentance, that prayer of penitence, we get things wrong. We do. It's just part of who we are. It's about saying sorry. Sorry to each other when we get things wrong. Sorry to God. Turning back to him. That's the washing clean. Um, it's also part of the being blameless. It's trying to lead those, do things right, those to live in that way of love. And with all of that, um, Peter says, be at peace with God. I notice that he says, try to do these things. Try to be spotless. Try to be blameless. Time, try to be at peace with God. We don't always get things right, but this is the, this is the journey that we're, we're called on. I want to stick just with this image of 
pregnancy as I come in to finish. Because my time here at Twerton, I've just had this sense of of God perhaps uh, wanting to birth something new here. You know, we, we talk about the new creation, we talk about physical birth. Sometimes God places something inside of us, um, in, our, in our minds, in our hearts, something new that he wants to do. It's an idea to begin with. It's, it's, it's in line with his teaching. It's, it's good. And it starts just as a seed that begins to grow. Um, and I just get a sense that perhaps God is, there's something like that going on for someone or some, a group of you here. I don't, I don't know. And there'll be a waiting time. Um, there'll be a, a gestation time, a feeding time before it comes to birth. I don't know how long the gestation is going to be, how long that time of waiting <coughs> is going to be. If that um, it, it speaks to you, if you've got something that's just niggling in your heart that you think God's talking about to you. Do, I encourage you, I'm, I'm, leave, I'm just about to leave now, finish my placement here, but do go and talk to, to Rich or to Joel or to Mark. Share that idea, share that burden that's on your heart, that seed that's growing. There's always a discernment in those, these sorts of things. Uh, it's good to take someone else along with you on that. So I just encourage you, if, that, if that's you, if that rings a bell, to speak to, um, say, Rich or Joel or Mark and share that and just allow God to bring that to fruition in his time. Amen.